Hey everybody, it is Daniel here for Mobile Syrup and we are looking at the Nexus 5. This is a heavily, heavily leaked device. Everybody knew it was coming, but it is finally here and it really is a great piece of hardware. It's a huge improvement in terms of uh, hand feel from the Nexus 4. And uh, we'll go through all these hardware improvements in just a minute. But let's go over uh, the pricing. So this is available in Canada and many other countries, but in Canada for $349 for the 16 gigabyte version and $399 for the 32 gig version. There's no 8 gig version this time and a little, it's a little bit more expensive on the high end than last year's Nexus 4, but it's certainly a better machine. So what does it have? Well, it has this 5 inch, or it's actually 4.9 5 inch. Uh, 1080p IPS display, really, really nice display. Uh, we have a uh, LG G2 here, uh, and it's got the same display as well on it. So you can see, uh, while you know, there are a little, you know, a few differences here and there, you can see that um, by and large, they are similar panels. The G2 is a 5.2 inch panel, whereas the Nexus 5 is a five inch panel, but Similar color saturation, uh, very, very good uh, viewing angles, and overall very high fidelity. I think the panel is a little bit better on the G2. You can't tell from this camera, but it's a little better on the G2. It's a little um, sharper, but it's a, it's a lot more reflective, and I think that's due to the glass that LG used as opposed to the Nexus 5, which feels, looks to me at least uh, in, in my brief overview of it, not quite as reflective. This is this has Gorilla Glass 3 on it, which is going to be good for scratching and uh, preventing uh, nicks and, and, and other things. So what else does it have? It has a 2.26 gigahertz uh, Snapdragon 800 processor, 2 gigs of DDR3 RAM. This is the 16 gig model. It has a 2300 milliamp hour battery. And of course, it runs LTE. Finally, this is not just an unofficial rollout of LTE, this is, it officially supports LTE over AWS. No band 7, no 2600 megahertz here, unfortunately, but this will work on pretty much every Canadian carrier. It will also work on Win Mobile because it supports band 4 over HSPA Plus, it supports AWS. And uh, it also has an 8 megapixel camera on the back that has optical image stabilization. So if we look at the hardware, it looks much more kind of uniform than the Nexus 4, which was glass back and had these that speckled design here. It looked really nice, but this is a little bit taller, it's slightly slimmer, and it's certainly thinner. And the matte backing here, this is a rubbery matte backing. If you've ever used the Nexus 10, you'll find it very familiar. It's a similar feel to it. It's uh, definitely plastic, but it's it, it's, it's more like the, the Nokia Lumia line than it is like the Samsung Galaxy line. So it definitely feels nice in the hand. It's a bit of a fingerprint magnet, as you can tell, but uh, hopefully it should prevent those untoward falls uh, like the Nexus 4 experienced because it was so slippery. So this is definitely a nicer device. Uh, it has that uh, these ceramic buttons as well on the sides. You can see they're a little bit glossy, they're a little lighter than the rest of the device, but that's nothing uh, to be worried about. They feel great, they're well calibrated. And of course there is a micro, uh, SD, micro uh, SIM slot here. There's no SD slots unfortunately on these Nexus devices. Uh, that's just something you're gonna have to deal with forever and ever. On the bottom of the device, there is a mono speaker, and that's a microphone here, plus a micro USB port. And on the top, we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So let's turn it on. You can see it's a really nice display, really beautiful. Um, and let's go into uh, some of the cooler KitKat features. So obviously, it's there's a new home screen. You have some new icons here, and you can see that I can't um, get to my other home screen by default. There are two, but uh, what's interesting is that you create new home screens not by actually, um, you know, pinching to zoom or anything like that. You actually just drag something 
over to the other home screen and it's created. So then you can hold down the button, your, uh, your finger on the home screen, and you can cr uh, just you know, edit them as you see fit. You can create new widgets. This is how you get widgets onto the phone now. Uh, you can hold down anywhere on the home screen and tap that widget button, and you can scroll through your widgets, and then you can add wallpapers. Now, some of the wallpapers on the Nexus 5 are really, really stunning. And of course, the one that I had preloaded was the one that was leaked, that we leaked actually. Um, and uh, this is one of uh, a Google employee's uh, landscape photos. But a lot of them are a little bit more abstract and they're really nice. So definitely check those out when you have a chance. Um, obviously, there are a few improvements to the OS itself. And we have quite a few of them um, in the settings. So you can see this is Android 4.4. Uh, it's running um, kernel 3.4, which is the same as 4.3. So we're not sure exactly why Google hasn't improved the kernel, but maybe that'll come in a future version. We have inc we have uh, cloud printing built in, and we obviously have uh, some new settings in uh, the cellular area. We have the default SMS app, which is quite interesting because that allows developers to actually focus on improving um, the the makeup of their SMS app without fidgeting with um, you know APIs and private APIs things like that. Obviously, this has NFC capabilities, and um, as I'll show you in a minute, it has some other cool features. Um, there's the uh, in the display here. You can see that there is still wireless display support, so Miracast is supported, and uh, it's certainly uh, appreciated. There's a new Daydream app, which is interesting. Um, and, and we'll get to that in a second. But um, one of the major improvements to um, to KitKat is obviously this uh, left side Google Now pane. So it's a permanent pane here. And you can see that not only is Google Now on the home screen, but you can also say something and activate it. OK, Google, search for mobile syrup. No, well, it didn't look up mobile syrup, but it looked up mobile. But what you can do now is actually activate Google Now anywhere on the home screen. It's not like Moto X. You can't turn the phone off and have it uh, answer your prayers. But it's certainly a great a feature addition and something that's going to be very, very appreciated. Of course, one of the other features uh, that, we, that we are looking forward to that everybody is going to get down the road is uh, Google Hangout um, SMS support. So I can type in um, a number here, and it'll ask me, what do you want? Do you want it to send it as an SMS or a Hangout? Now, the, the tabs are actually separated. So when you're in a Hangout and you're in an SMS message, the uh, it'll, it'll be a single contact, but the content will be separated. So the a text message won't turn into a hangout and vice versa. It's not like iMessage in that regard, but it is a better system than there than it was. Of course, we have uh, that new dialer as well. So if we take a look here, you can see that there's a new dialer and it has um, it has that uh, quick contact lookup support as well. Now everything else is fairly similar. You're not going to notice a lot of aesthetic uh, improvements. In, uh, in the rest of the OS, you can see that the the uh, status bar is now white, and that's you know just an, a, a small aesthetic change. The app launcher is also translucent now, and there are no widgets here, so it's much more focused on the apps themselves, and uh, should be much more accessible to the average user. Now, if we go into the camera app, you can see that the camera is very similar in design to the Nexus 4, anything on Android 4.3, and you can hold down the uh, your, your, your thumb to access the settings and then swipe up into the side to access them. So that's kind of uh, you know, an interesting feature that uh, I'm not sure I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a huge fan of, but you know anyway, that's just, uh, it's just it is what it is. So also, one of the cooler features here is something called HDR Plus. Now, this is a feature that um, 
is new to the Nexus 5 and may also be exclusive to the Nexus 5, we're not sure, but it actually provides H, uh, HDR on the device uh, without any processing and uh, it should be a great addition. So certainly uh, we're going to do some testing there and see how it improves photos. Whether the photos are markedly improved over the Nexus 4, we don't know yet, but it looks like things are looking good in that regard. So small feature improvements here, we can see things like uh, in a better downloads uh, UI, you, uh, it's a little bit cleaner. A lot of the leaks were actually correct about all these new, uh, new features, but very, very little in terms of uh, UI overhaul here. This is more of a, another UI improvement, say going from ice cream sandwich to jelly bean 4.1, stuff like that. Uh, faster is certainly the name of the game then, though. This is a much faster device than the Nexus 4. Uh, battery we're not sure about yet, but uh, then again, we haven't had a lot of time to compare it to anything else. Let's do um, a quick um, feature comparison though to a few other devices. But before we do that, let me just show you that Nexus 5 does support the Nokia Lumia wireless charger. You can see that um, it just lights up. I charged this last night for the first time and it works in most orientations and it charges perfectly. It does not mess up. It does not stutter like the Nexus 4 did. So you won't have to worry about that if you have one of these lying around. Now obviously um, we have the LG G2 here. A very different device. Extremely different lineage. Unlike the Nexus 4 to the Optimus G, they're very dissimilar. They were complete. They were designed probably in, in, in complete separation of one another. Uh, but uh, certainly the same lineage in terms of, uh, of hardware inside it. So we also have the 4.7 inch uh, HTC One and you can see that uh, the Nexus is a little bit thicker, uh, but not by much. And we also have, uh, it's also a little bit taller, but again, not by much, it's negligible. And uh, I don't know. I, I, I like the I like the HTC One. I really like the aluminum finish. But the the Nexus does not disappoint. It's much lighter as well. And finally, we have the Galaxy S Four. And you can see the Nexus Five is taller again. Um, the Nexus is a little bit thicker than the Galaxy, but uh, not by much. And obviously, the Galaxy has that removable battery. It's twenty six hundred milliamp. So battery life, we're still hoping is uh, is is good, but we're thinking that maybe the uh, OEM devices like the GS4 may have an edge. Uh, you can see there's a little bit of a, of a camera hump on the Galaxy S4 that does not exist here. It's a, I mean, it's, t it's tiny. It's really, really negligible. So both of them have a tiny camera hump. The Galaxy S4 is a little bit bigger one. Uh, the Galaxy S4 is just not as well made. It just, in the hand, the Nexus 5 trounces it by far. Really no contest at all. So that is a, uh, a quick look at the Nexus 5. Now this is obviously going to be a very popular device this season. Because it's available on Google Play, it's, uh, it's at a heavy discount when you buy it online compared to when you get it from a carrier. So keep in mind, though this will come unlocked when you buy it from a carrier, it will receive updates directly from Google when you buy it from a carrier. It will also be significantly more expensive outright. If you're looking for a phone on a two-year contract, however, uh, it may be a lot cheaper than the equivalent uh, high-end Android from HTC, Sony, Motorola, or Samsung. So this is uh, the Nexus 5, and it is available now. Go to uh, mobilesyrup.com for more info. Thanks so much for watching.